Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Omnia Performance Podcast with myself, Fergus Crawley, with myself, Johnny P. Big and Johnny P. With Sam Cornforth. Hello. <laughs> that was convincing. I'm you know Ron you... Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit like when, you, when your voicemail says, uh, leave your name here. <laughs> Sam Cornforth. <laughs> Be oh yeah. no! Do I say it again? <laughs> be, 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 no. Uh, uh, would you like to hear back? No. You have gotten through to the voicemail. Tam Cornforth. Do you remember those people that did the um, hello, 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 and you'd be speaking to them for ages? Oh, yeah, yeah. They go, oh, "I'm not there. Leave gotcha. the message after me." Got bastards. I, re I recently started rewatching Breaking Bad, and it infuriates mm -hmm. me every time I hear Jesse's voicemail come up. It was like, yo, A to the B to the C, Captain. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, leave it after the tone, yo. And I'm like, that's just so unnecessarily long. If somebody was in an emergency and needed to contact you, Mr. Meth Selling Man, you have made it much more difficult than it needs to be for them. But nonetheless, what is more difficult than needs be is if you have not yet hit follow or subscribe on whatever pl platform you're listening on. Thank you. Thank you. They get better and better, don't they? <laughs> and that you have rated and or reviewed the show five stars, as Sam has already done. Haven't you? I have, yeah. Yeah, Recently thank you. followed as well. Very, very kind. Recently. <laughs> yeah, I did. You put a story up saying you could do a 10K giveaway. I hope I win because <laughs> I follow you. Sam. <laughs> it's a secret. Slides the envelope across the crossing. The brown paper bag is under the table, but nonetheless, just do all the podcasty things. Today, we are going to explore everything Sam Cornforth. And that, my friends, is a rocky road. I've actually just had a rocky road on the way here. You did? A little I less did. fun I paid for it. You, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah got that in. So, in Sam. Mind. Yes. Describe yourself. <laughs> Identity crisis incoming. Go. Uh, so, I am a professional zero hour contract actor, um, full time unemployed, man child, basically. Uh, you know, I stayed at your house last night. I have sleeping patterns of prepubescent boys. Um, Plural, because you're heavier. Yeah, yeah, 95 yeah. kilos, nearly, nearly 96. I've got you, don't worry. Um, <laughs> and in my spare time, I make silly videos. Uh, and that's basically me. I make silly videos for brands. And it feels like a cheat code. And imposter syndrome is real. But I'm just going to keep going with it and see what happens. He's missed out. He's missed out the fact that what we're going to discuss today—that he is actually a silent killer of an athlete <laughs> as well. I, I, I was going to see if that would come out or not, but that's that's he interesting. Never, he that's, never that's almost it. an, he never an imposter it. syndrome thing, isn't it? You're not going to say. Also, I am super jacked, and I can uh, <laughs> thruster start, 120 for start two. Throwing out his thruster numbers and his uh, what, what did you did you a 140 clean and jerk? Just 150. Uh, 150, 150 yeah. <laughs> this is funny. We were laughing about this yesterday <laughs> because when I was in the office. I saw him do the 150 clean. I thought, oh, fucking hell, 150 clean. Turned it to you, not knowing that he then jerked it. So you'll have just seen the jerk <laughs> and assumed that he maybe just jerked it. But I was like, oh, you got 150 clean yesterday. Yeah. He was like, I jerked it as well. <laughs> yeah, that... but, but I've essentially cut it off at the key moment and just shown you. So you look, I've only seen the clean and you've only seen the jerk. <laughs> so like, wow, Sam yeah. can clean 150. Wow, impressive. Sam can jerk 150. Yeah, when in reality... Yeah. He can do both. He can do both. Can do <laughs> Which both. is very exciting. Yeah. So, I mean, that is one of many things that you have juggled with over the years. And you, you are, I mean, you are competent as an athlete. We were laughing in the car here that mm. I, it's I, going I, to upset I, listeners that he has absolutely zero consistency no. or pattern to his training, uh, which I, really I brings up a we, question. If we probably stripped away that veneer of self-deprecation, we would probably find that there is, there, there's got to be some consistency. There's some order in, in the chaos, I would imagine. Yeah. Because you don't get 150 clean and jerk clean and jerk yeah uh, uh by mistake by turning up um two things just immediately to, to to piss on chips you don't get it by turning up to random cro crossfit classes mm. and nor do you get it just by every now and again thinking oh i better do some training but yeah to, to kind of skip a certain part of the story you you and i'd like you to take us through this you clearly have recently dived in deeper taken these things more seriously and thought now we're really going to properly go for it here because your numbers have gone beautifully you know mm. you, can, you can see the progress yeah and if it is not too forward of me you can physically see the progress you know, you, mm, you're, yeah. you're jacked what did you say francois jack yeah, yeah. Just, just, <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> just explain the reference just, just a caveat <laughs> that. it's one of these things right i used an inside joke in a public setting where it didn't belong and immediately sort of giggled at myself and i thought oh no nobody knows what i'm talking about so me and my brother there's a rugby player called francois jack i think i think south african 
He might not even be a rugby player. It's, it's that old and inside. He could be, <laughs> could be cricket. There's a sportsman somewhere called Francois Jacques. And me and my brother, I think it was over lockdown, whenever one of us was looking jacked, we went, ah, you're looking quite Francois. And then I use that in this conversation with neither of them know, knowing what on earth I was talking about. But to summarize, Sam is looking very Francois Thanks, as well mate. as performing very extraordinarily well. Extraordinarily. Yeah. So we, we have kind of opened up about seven different avenues of conversation there at once. So <laughs> I don't I know which chaos, one you want to, want that, to that grab a hold is, of. That is very archetypal of Sam's existence. So yeah, I think yeah. we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, deep yeah. dive at all of them. Yeah, so I, what, what, does, what does a typical week look like for Sam Cornforth from a training point of view? Hmm. Minimum five training sessions. Um, and even though you say don't, uh, you, you surely don't do random classes. I do, I do to a degree do random classes, but cherry pick them. Yeah. So I, I work with a few gyms. I train at WIT. There's a lovely gym called Train Inside Out in uh, Roslyn Park, which is outdoors, which is amazing, um, which has forced me to run more. Um, and I do uh, run a lot more and go to the track. Um, but it's like, I do just wake up and decide. What do I want to do today? Like that 150 clean and jerk was just a, I got invited to the session the night before and they said, let's PB something. And I went, well, I haven't done a clean and jerk in about a year and a half. As in I've clean and jerk, but not tested a clean and jerk. Yeah. And then just tried. But when I cherry pick workouts, I go like, I want at least three endurance style forms of training. So it could be an endurance class or a long run or an interval run. Um, and then try to mix CrossFit in with that. Well, I, th I think the mistake I made when we were talking about this in the car is with CrossFit, it's very easy to just just redline for the sake of redlining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for years I did that um, and ate like a pig because you watch all these documentaries where you see people like, even like yourself, you watch these documentaries where you're training probably 30 to 40 hours a week and having it to peaks eat. Out, peaks out at 30. Yeah, say, yeah, yeah with, for context. And eating crazy amounts of food to like sustain that f like level of training. And within CrossFit as well, you watch the documentaries where they go to the CrossFit games and all these women who are jacked, they're eating Haribo pizzas and all this to like just get calories just in, calories, yeah. and cereals in their hotel room. And I think the mistake people make is, and I've made for years, is going, well, they're eating Haribo and they're hitting all these weights. <laughs> yeah. So you just like do a five minute AMRAP in a class and then go Nando's and then go get an ice cream afterwards. And then you're like, oh, I'm not seeing any progress. So I'm just like, recent times, past like eight months, I personally just didn't like the way I looked and I was training a lot, but I was like, I want to look like I train. Um, was that magnified by the fact you now have a bigger presence on yeah, socials? That's, that's yeah, going to be my question. Is, uh, Interesting. I was yeah. interested before we even knew you were coming on the, uh, the podcast uh, with us. I was interested to know what the trigger had been there mm. and whether it had been the fact that your profile is reading, reading. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're seeing yourself. You talk openly anyway about the, imposter syndrome that you feel or, or, yeah, or certain, yeah. certainly the, the fact that you're super aware of yourself when you're, when you're doing these things and, mm. and, and all the rest of it. And some of that clearly has turned around and you thought, okay, I, I can see myself in a certain way and I want to change that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it was towards the end of a relationship as well. And I was like, uh, stressing about video ideas, but then as well, when I stress about video ideas, I then focus on thinking of ideas rather than my training. And then it like just spiraled into this, like, I'm no longer looking after myself. I'm just stressing about videos. So the content I am producing isn't stuff that I enjoy because I'm thinking what's going to get likes, what's going to go viral rather than what do I find funny and what do I enjoy making and with who, um, which is why I've gone back to training first and hopefully the rest just sort itself out because I've discovered that if my training goes to shit, the rest of my life just collapses. I stop communicating with people. I stop checking in with people. Um, I'm less self-aware and I just like churn out shit videos so i feel like if my training's in place i'm happy with my body image then the rest just feels like it organically happens and i'm more of a I'm more of a positive person to be around mm. so and that doesn't come from just aesthetics it's like mental health for me is sure. like yeah. is, it, is it all intrinsically driven or is there an element that you need to maintain the presence that you have built online and feel you need to look a certain way is there any element of that or is it all self-development uh, self-control driven i think there is there is there is an extrinsic element of it i think naturally i think i, I think if people get in good shape and say they don't care what other people think they're lying a little bit um like from a job like mine where engagement is really my cv um if you're topless and you're in good shape but you're also like take the piss out of yourself your engagement's going to do well mm. um so there was that as an element as well but mainly it was my headspace was in a bad place i didn't like how i looked in photos I didn't want to take my top off. 
um and that that self-deprecating like that negative way i saw myself i really affected the way i was working in my job and creatively so i i just yeah stripped everything back took a bit of a pause on content um and then just focused on my training and just at least if it was inconsistent being consistently inconsistent in my training it was better than skipping three days because i was like oh no i should be editing i should be editing mm. um yeah so i just started focusing on myself more and i feel like it's helped with opportunities because more bigger opportunities have come my way in recent times since taking care of myself do you think those opportunities are born straight from that uh, that um input you now have into your confidence so you're looking after yourself you're mm. thinking of yourself more positively you're, yeah yeah you sounds like you developed although you're saying that there's a kind of a, a sporadic nature to it, you developed mm -hmm. a routine that, that's a kind of a foundational springboard for those other things yeah but has the fact that you do look the shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do yeah. man. You, look, you look great <laughs> the moustache is the yeah. real but you look well yeah. as well Sam. We, we've you and i've met previously we're in belfast Black 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 Black, yeah, that's right 14 yeah. pints of guinness uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know you, you didn't look unwell by any stretch but i've seen you now you you, yeah. you, you look at, uh, you're really really well so there's Thank clearly you. some uh 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 you know it's, it's clearly working for you mm. but the the opportunities that you're getting then business-wise for you for your acting career and all mm -hmm. that, and, and things that you do yourself do you think they're coming because people are looking in and they're seeing kind of what I'm seeing from a professional perspective? Okay, mm. we want to work with this guy. Or do you think they're coming because you've got, you have the confidence to then accept that you are, you know, you're not self-sabotaging because you're not kind of self-deprecating so much. And mm -hmm. Do you think it's both or do you think it's maybe one or the other? I don't, yeah, I don't do, know. Do, 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 the question's yeah, a bit vague. But do, no, do you know I understand what, I mean? what you mean. I think it's interesting. I think we speak about people all the time, like with content and things like that. And it's, you can tell when someone's off like mm -hmm. through their content yeah, yeah. even if it's like subconsciously when you're watching content you can tell when someone isn't posting as much the frequency changes or the quality changes or the captions are a, a bit more negative about themselves where they're like oh i'm really stressed about this injury uh when more and more mental health posts come up or um fewer posts start to arrive you as a consumer of content religiously i consume probably too much content to discuss this um i see when people are off and i feel like even if it isn't, isn't a conscious thing, as someone that's watching someone's content, you can tell when someone's genuinely enjoying what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like I'm at the point now where I'm putting a lot less stress on myself content wise. I'm trying to return to what do I enjoy and what do I enjoy sending to my family in a Facebook chat? And they go, oh, this made me laugh so much. Rather, because that's what I started. I would just send videos to my mum that me and my brother would make yeah. in lockdown. And she'd be like pissing herself. And she'd be like, I've sent this to the work chat. They're all pissing themselves. Um, <laughs> and kicking off all that angry comments which is another point um but i've tried to return back to that my the origin of what i want to do is just make videos that make my family laugh and then hopefully yeah. other people laugh and i feel like which, which is just an authenticity isn't yeah, it? it's just, just you being I, you as opposed to you day, trying I just to enjoy, be what you think other i love people training need. i love yeah. banging weights i love pints and i love making videos yeah um there we go that's yeah, a, that's, that's a T-shirt right there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's a, it's a simple philosophy, isn't it? And it's interesting. It's an interesting yeah. journey that you've obviously been on, because before you've made that decision to mm. to say, do you know what, my physical health and, and therefore my mental health, or whichever way around you you kind of prioritize yeah, that yeah. in that decision making process, you've obviously had to come to a kind of a a threshold point within yourself where you've recognized the negative factors that you're describing having fixed. So you've obviously gotten to a point where you've said. I, I feel physically out of shape or I feel mm -hmm. like I'm not, you know, uh, my health isn't as good as it could be, my mental health. But you're also describing the fact that you felt like your content was kind of slipping away from you in the sense mm. that you you weren't, you now weren't making it for the right reasons and therefore yeah. you weren't, the product wasn't something that you felt yeah, yeah. you wanted to put your name to ultimately and all yeah. that. So it's, 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 it's an interesting thing to kind of just break down and find that actually what it boils down to, you kind of recognised that you weren't being true to yourself. Mm, not at all. And having discovered how to do that or having put the the the, the, the plans in place put the map in place yeah. to do that it seems like it's very quickly just turned around and going right okay yeah so it's just a little bit of misdirection from your part and then you've you've, you've yeah, sorted yeah. your compass out and but you course can, corrected which a lot yeah, of people course, don't yeah, that's, that's the phrase oh, of loop yeah a lot of people don't mm. because quite they're often more convenient a big, things. Big, yeah, yeah 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 you know yeah. a big problem some kind of breakdown of, of some sort some you know that threshold point can be overwhelming and and crush people but it's it's interesting to know that, that you, you've managed to find that, okay, this is all a little bit yeah. off. Here's how to fix it. Mm -hmm. So I guess there is a question in there somewhere, which was, 
and I think you've answered it to a certain degree already, but did you think, because you fixed it all, and it, 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 it seems like you fixed it all universally, holistically. You've, mm. you've gone, okay, this needs to happen, and this needs to happen, and all the rest of it. Yeah. But did you sit down and plan that out, or did you just think, fuck okay, it, I need to get my training in order, and then from that, it's like, no, oh, I feel a lot better, and from that, the confidence came. Was that an organic fix, or was that something I think that it was, you, that I think you it planned was, out? Is what I I'm think asking. it was an organic. I think everything in my life is organic. I don't plan anything. <laughs> I literally, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. You should move to California <laughs> yeah, I should. and start talking about uh, whole, whole foods being affordable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I think it was an organic fix. I think um, there was a period early doors where I started making videos that the engagement was a lot higher than I anticipated, and then the vanity metrics kind of took over, and I was kind of like end gaming videos before I was making the videos. I was thinking yeah, like, yeah. what number is this joke going to get? Am I going to get 4,000 likes? Am I going to get, is this going to go viral on TikTok? Will it go viral? Do I have to like put a funny start? Like I was, I was thinking too much about the end product and the dopamine hit that I want from this video rather than what's the story I want to tell, which is my training. It's everything I've grown up to do is tell stories. So through the stress internally and like, on my own in my flat in London, just thinking about likes and thinking about all these things. Um, I think I was, I then just went like my, I, I look out of shape. I still train a lot. Mm. Um, and I felt like I, cause I wasn't in shape. I had to prove on social media that I'm, oh, I am strong. I am fit. And like overly like demonstrating everything. Whereas yeah. now I'm, I've lost a bit of weight. I can go back to like what I enjoy and trying new sports and, doing like hurdles on the weekend like what the fuck and, and some, something silly on friday yeah, yeah something yeah. very silly. very silly very and, and just, just have you been doing hurdles at weekends or is that just something you're no i genuinely have been doing, hurdles. Been doing hurdles yeah and shot put mm. uh, mate mental but little things like that like i would i would never That's consider just doing and it's just simply not being overweight anymore then you just feel like your body's moving well there. there's obviously a psychological switch yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I am i am now more capable because i have committed the time to free myself up to do yeah, more it's, 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 fulfilling, it's exactly it? yeah. how i felt yeah. coming out of the back end of powerlifting was yeah. i felt like i'd genuinely be like god i'm strong i'm stronger than everyone in this room yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <sighs> yeah. <sighs> and then when i first sort of started working in god i'm strong <laughs> <laughs> that's such a, br such a brilliant thing to think <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be said literally, I realize what you're saying, literally it's so in a pub and it'd be pint over and it'd be like this feels light to me. Yeah, this feels light to me. This, this, this is probably 568 milliliters. I bet that feels light to, light to me than it does you, son. Hook gripping it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was mixed grip. Pure meathead back in the day. And I look around the room and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I am. Um, I have put in a lot of work. To, because it's it's pride. It's like pride yeah. that I'd, I'd made myself strong. But I was 102 kilos. I was chunky. I wasn't, oh, I was 100, yeah. I wasn't flabby. Yeah, we, what are you now, Sam? 95, 96 now. That's good luck. Stones yeah. come off you then. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we, 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 we've like peak. We're both about if we chonked up, we'd be about 100, 102. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas I'm I think my, top weight, yeah. my daily is about 93. Yeah, like that's kind of what my body is happy being at. But mm -hmm. when I was 102, I felt rough mm -hmm. and I felt restricted. You're carrying like, all this shit yeah, that you don't yeah, need. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. I was asking about the movement thing, about hurdles and things. If you've lost a stone of weight, mm -hmm. uh, although you know which came first, the chicken and the egg. I'll do hurdles because I feel more confident. And I'm so excited about life and all the rest. Yeah, of it. yeah. But if you found that excitement yeah. just in a brief moment. Uh, maybe pharmacologically or something, and, and then tried to do a hurdle at 102, you'd have probably done the one thought, nah, fuck this. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't feel good. It yeah. does not feel so good. So my training has changed because my training before was very much, um, the, my training, the purpose of my training was to try and lose weight. I was like constantly thinking, oh, I don't, I can't do that class because um, it's not perfect. It's, it's not what I need to do. I, I, it's got too much barbell. I don't need barbell at the moment. I need to do endurance, endurance, endurance. So if I couldn't book into the certain classes, I would just skip training for the day, which was mm. like, Totally counterintuitive. I was like, <laughs> what's the saying? Is it don't let perfect be the enemy of good? For a long yeah. time, I was yeah, yeah. very much progress, like... Progress, not perfection is what you should Yeah, yeah. Say. I was yeah, literally yeah. going like, well, that class isn't going to burn this many calories, so I shouldn't go. And I couldn't find another one. Then it would get 6 p.m. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. I'm not training today. And I'm feeling and, quite hungry. Yeah. And then I'd have like, <laughs> and I'd order a fat salad, a Bill Moan Turkish salad with falafel, chicken, halloumi. And I would just yeah. like think I'm being healthy. And like, I'd be like, no, this is sensible. I didn't go to that class because I wouldn't be perfect for this endurance class tomorrow but then i just went fuck it i feel better mentally after i do classes spending time with people um and a lot of the time content opportunities do come from just like being with people like i'll be chatting to someone in the middle of a class during a partner workout and i'll be like they'll be like fucking hell this assault bike kills me like when you do this and i'll be like assault bike 
And then I'll just think of a video idea and I'll be like, oh, cool. And I'll make a note in my head. And I've got two video ideas from just doing a workout with some stranger who I've, I would have never have rubbed shoulders with if I didn't book into this class. Um, so my focus has gone from aesthetics to just enjoyment. And now I'm just literally thinking, train as much as I can and enjoy it uh, while I can. And, and, and the, the real thing there as well, everything you've described is essentially the forward motion and commitment coming from making a positive change in your life. In your case, it was getting fitter and losing a bit of weight to feel better about yourself and the metrics mm -hmm. you were tracking. Mm -hmm. That is entirely translatable to other things. It can be, I'm going to start saving 250 quid a month rather than 150 quid a month. Yeah, but yeah. by taking the action, you have completely elevated all the other pillars of your life in doing so. Mm -hmm. And that's really the message there, not that losing well, losing weight will make you feel phenomenal because yeah, no, be, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the kind of incidentals along the way. What was, but what it's, was, the, it's the positive first step and commitment yeah. to action to something. What I really like about it, the, the bit that, that, that keeps making me smile is, is, is this kind of moment of realization where you realize that you, you were a slave to the algorithm essentially mm. uh, and, and what you f felt that meant to you and that kind of yeah. 4,000 likes and all the sort yeah. of dopamine response that you'll get from that and then suddenly realize that in amongst it you've forgotten your, your, the passion of your art mm. which is to is to make the comedy that, that makes you laugh. Yeah, and yeah. That you can experience the laughter from. Yeah. And in, in amongst that, you've just kind of built a map and, and turned it around. Because presumably now you feel, you're, you're saying that's that's the way you're doing things now is to be more authentic to yourself. But yeah, yeah. are you seeing the results come from that? Are you seeing? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Like, and as well, like, even if I don't see the results come from that, it doesn't stress me as much as it used no, to. Yeah. Like if I posted a video and it got like 500 fewer likes than the previous post, I'd be like, you're only as good as your last post, Sam. Come on, get your fucking head out of your ass. <laughs> and like stress. <laughs> but now I'm literally like, as soon as I press post, it doesn't exist to me anymore. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, yeah, and I just yeah. go, right, what's the next as one? Lo as long as you're happy with the outcome. Yeah, as yeah, long yeah. as I watch it and the, the, the I know laugh. Outcome, as yeah, long yeah. as I do it. <laughs> 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 At least once. Um, <laughs> if I'm proud of something, if I think it's finally edited, uh, I'm happy with the audio, happy with making someone else look good. Because that's, again... It's easier to be self-deprecating when you're not self-conscious. <laughs> like I'm not as self-conscious anymore about how I look and like, um, yeah. So I, I, I love making myself look as ugly as possible in content to the benefit of whoever's in my video with me. Um, so yeah. I've, the kind of fall guy. Yeah. Approach, yeah. yeah. Do you know something there that's crossed my mind? This is stick with me on this for a moment. Although, oh, here I think, we go. Yeah, no, but I think from a comedy perspective, you'll get it. I, what was the film that Jim Carrey did where he, where he was, Briefly, God, uh, Bruce Almighty. Bruce Almighty, Bruce Almighty, Bruce Almighty. Yeah. and the, the poster for that, uh, the, the the billboard poster, was him in the uh, the Michelangelo pose. Yeah, yeah. And his body, he was tight. He looked good. Yeah. Uh, and he got in that in that shape for it. I remember Jonathan Ross interviewing him and asking him directly, "Did you think it was a risk? This is weird. This, but come with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you think it was a risk getting in mad good shape because it it kind of speaks to it speaks against comedy." Mm. And he was, he was kind of like, yeah, I get, I get where you're coming from because what you want to see from a comedian is kind of a bit of flub and a bit of mess and a bit mm. of kind of clumsiness and all this kind of slapstick stuff. He's very slapstick, isn't he? Yeah, but, yeah. Know, but what he was saying was that two things came from it. One was he, he, he gained a realization that he could address those things in himself. Yeah. This has just crossed my mind. I remember the interview really well all of a sudden. But yeah, yeah. So he'd, he'd gained that kind of realization that that allowed him some kind of control of himself that mm -hmm. was external to, to, the, to the demands of the, of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also he was then able to, and you're a, quite a physical comedian as well, he, mm -hmm. he was able to do the physical stuff better. Yeah, yeah. So he's saying, so being in better shape has made me a better comedian mm -hmm. uh, from a physical perspective, but also from a kind of a, you know, from that... Um, confidence perspective I don't yeah. know if, that, if that was a wild tangent to take you on I've, I've you, seen, I've seen you sketches actually feel from, that or not I don't know if that's something you've experienced I've seen sketches from comedians recently talking about exactly that being mm. like comedians saying comedy should be reserved for people of that nature mm. well, it never crossed my mind until that interview and this is how long ago was that film 15 20 years ago but, but it, it was it was one of those things I thought I'd never really crossed my mind that being in shape uh, or not being in shape would be something that would be a vehicle yeah. for comedy. Or, but when they discussed it, I thought that's a very good point because you don't think of comedians as being jacked. Mm -hmm. You think of comedians as being kind of funny in all aspects. And relatable. You want and, them to be more yeah, relatable. That, exactly. I mean, he said than, that as well, but yeah. relatable. You know, you know, do you make yourself honorable but if, by being jacked and take your top off of a six pack? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it's not like me. You know, he's, he's better than me, whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah. Did any of that cross your mind at, at all, or is this yeah, just sort but this, of... this is why I try and be as transparent as possible and like stories and things about my mental health and um, body image, like dysmorphia and shit like that. I'm like, uh, I think it's, it's, 
still quite relatable how I've lost weight because I've just gone to classes that are accessible to anyone. Like some of them are more expensive and I'm very lucky to be work, like offered free memberships at certain gyms that are quite premium. But mm. the quality of workouts that I get, you can get at any gym. Like if you just join like a Virgin Active class or even a pure gym, I'm sure do studio classes that you can go to. Like I've just gone to as many classes as I can to have fun. And um, I feel like that's still a relatable aspect of it. All. But I do agree that like, I do like to do the physical gags and the physical comedy stuff. Yeah. And it does help massively if you're like, yeah. And I, I feel like. Oh, there's some stuff that's, that's re you know, you're going to have to repeat it to get the right edit and all yeah, this. Oh, yeah. That didn't feel right. I mean, there, was, uh, there was one recently where you were, it was a kind of a morph suit or something you were in. It might have yeah, been before yeah. you, before you, before yeah. you were in. But I, I remember watching that thinking, see, you're getting that wrong over and over and over again. That must have been a fucking hard day. <laughs> that was honestly that and, video. And you've got to get it wrong to get it right. Yeah, you? that That's part video. Of the, there was a poor cleaner who doesn't speak <laughs> much English <laughs> yeah. in the toilets cleaning. But he had the, it was his fault. He left the door open and he's looking in the mirror at me behind him. He's cleaning the mirror <laughs> and I've got a sock down my pants and yeah. a blue morph suit going like this. <laughs> and he just kept looking up at the wrong points. And I've got like, this BTS of my, on my grid of me just doing this. And then I look and make eye contact with him and just stop and just like, walk out of frame. <laughs> um, poor bloke. Yeah. Just go up to him afterwards and tell him it was for a uni project because he was just like, he was like, I'm not telling anyone, I'm not telling anyone. <laughs> <laughs> like I was holding with the dope. <laughs> it's not a sock. It's yeah. not a sock. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like um, I, I, as well, like little things like about body image and stuff like that and this relatability. Like I'm, I'm self-aware that I'm a weird looking person. Like I've got a fat tash on my face. And I went to my barber's recently and he was like, have you ever considered a hair transplant? And I was like, oh, thanks, no. mate. You're the, I'm oh, paying you to sort no. my hair. But like little things like that. Like, I can't work with like, this. I think like someone like Jim Carrey who's had his hair, like I, th I feel like I wouldn't want to because I think it makes me more relatable to the everyday, like the, the everyday man that's going through the same thing. I don't want to be like- It comes back to being you, doesn't it? Turn up be... on a sketch and I'm like, Kipchoge. <laughs> <laughs> um, he got here fast, didn't he? He was bloody early to his own gig. Why? Because I'm so jacked and fast these days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the, the the thing is, well, you're in a niche, aren't you? Mm. Like you are the fitness comedian. Well, there's yeah, it's interesting. So it's kind of a case. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you've got a, you've got a big pool of people to appeal to before that perhaps comes relevant in the scale that it would with Bruce Almighty, for example. Well, I'm assuming, and you can correct me entirely straight away if you want here that the, the fitness community and and the, the niche that you have is one that you have because of the nature of your your, your lifestyle whether you've changed it for the better or not recently you still mm. worked in and lived in that environment you still trained and those were the people that you were mm. hanging about with but i don't imagine that that's all you want to do you're gonna you're gonna want to you're gonna expand and, yeah, and, yeah. and move into other markets and all the rest of it yeah so the that kind of being part of crossfit and being part of that kind of thing although will obviously be part of your life isn't necessarily something that's that's paramount for your comedy it's not, it's no, not, not necessary at all. in no. which case then it becomes less of a reference point yeah and just the fact that you're in shape yeah would be something that people would notice yeah i'd rather like over time the goal is to be like the the gym the, the comedian in the gym uh, the, the dream would be to like um there's a guy called caleb presley who does stuff for basketball sports he's a blonde guy with a mustache and he um interviews huge celebrities he, he's into, into has, has, has has bullies, and in, yeah. drake and drake's son and stuff like that and it's the beauty of his presence on social media is it's entirely original and whenever you see his name next to a celebrity's name as a collab you know what you're getting yeah and i love that's that that would be the dream scenario is to be the gym equivalent of that if you see like um i don't know kipchoge's on my mind now if i saw kipchoge and sam cornford as a real You'd be like, I know this is going to be Kipchoge yeah, in a different yeah. light, or mm -hmm. like, who, who is the dream guest? Now they just put, they just sweep Kipchoge to the side, unless he is. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but who who would it be? Because if if there is a big vision for you mm. and that that sort Johnny of the, as a sports person, yeah, big Johnny yeah, Pain, yeah, yeah, you've been roped in, mate. Roped in. <laughs> yeah, let's as do it. Sports right now. person, whoever, anyone, um, well, they, like with with that vision I guess, in mind. Yeah, with that vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah who, who is it? Who do you see sitting Oof. there? Hasbullah. <laughs> Hasbro would be funny, but I feel like it's it's a bit it's limited. It's, it's limited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's limited, and everyone's everyone's doing it. At the it's minute. kind of been done, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. been done. Um, interesting. There's a guy called Munya who's also a social media creator. Uh, 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 Munya Chihuahua, yeah. I think his like, name is on Instagram. <laughs> I don't Chihuahua. imagine his surname's Chihuahua. Okay, um, I can bleep. Unless 
It is. But that, that, that is also a dog. Be. Yeah, I, I think it might be. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But he does social media stuff and um, he's, he's, he's very, very quick good. off the mark, isn't he? Very good. Oh, he does like satirical like uh, songs about like. Um, Matt Hancock. <laughs> yeah, Matt Hancock and stuff like that and Boris Johnson and all this these. This podcast will be heard the by day. no one now. Immediately censored by. Oh, do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just anything related to that period of our lives. It's like, nope. Yeah. Nope. But actor, actor wise, um, someone like Andy Circus. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd love to do like a mocap sketch with Andy Circus because he did like Smeagol, uh, Dawn Serkis of the Planet is, of the Apes. He's, he's uh, just a. Yeah, Andy Serkis is fucking brilliant. He's unbelievable. I don't know why, but he seems to be capable of... He's, he's the ultimate polymath, isn't he? He's capable yeah. of all these different things, yeah. but without losing that kind of human... Oh, it's Andy Serkis. He's just a yeah, yeah. nice I think guy be well. really good. Go on. Also part of that ecosystem, Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, it'd be awesome. I think you and him in a room together where he's being really stoically trying not to giggle. Yeah. With you, yeah, being, yeah. With you being you. Yeah, yeah. Would be Basically, anyone, anyone like that with a huge presence... Yeah. And then I'm happy to be the weirdo. I'm always happy to be the weirdo. The, 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 the relatable, odd-looking lad that's like, shouldn't be in a video with this person is what I want to be. Um, and I'm happy to take that part. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do yeah. that. Imagine, imagine this, is what, this is actually what I love about the modern world, is imagine, imagine 20 years ago as a parent hearing your child come to you saying, what do you want to do when you're older? <laughs> Astronaut, fireman, lawyer doctor no i'd like to be the weirdo that sits alongside celebrities across different platforms and yeah. make yeah. silly jokes and laugh about myself online yeah it's mad i remember what? Some yeah. circus circus clown but i said like, to that, to the, that the, question yeah, over yeah. and over and over until the point that but the, pricks probably the, 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 the fact clown. is the value you provide other people by just knowing that whenever you see sam corn honey wake up sam, sam's uploaded the video <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody knows what they're expecting and it's like i i'm giggling before i've even there's like an anticipation to it now. Mm. You're like, what? What did he come up with? It's going to be insane. And yeah. then some of them, you, you, you're in, you're 10 seconds in, you're like, okay, okay, don't know where this is going. 15 seconds in, you're like, oh, didn't see it going there. 20 <laughs> seconds in, you're like, how has he got here? And <laughs> yeah. then it goes from like comedy to like, what? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to, good. To, to then like a real creative appreciation for the fact that I have no concept. My, I, my brain could never get to the mm. creative outputs that you have. Mm. And it comes from ultimately a background of professionalism, which I think is something people might not know as... No, yeah. People might just assume that you're just some weirdo with a moustache that's also good at CrossFit, but there, yeah. there, there, is, a, there is a training background mm. professionally there which informs this, which you do speak about, but you know how yeah. fickle social media is where it sees one thing one day and then forms opinion and will ignore all of the supplementary mm. information. Yeah, so yeah. You, when do you move to London? 2018? 2017? Earlier, 2013. Oh, right, okay. About a decade I've been there now. From yeah. where? From where? Uh, Devon, okay. southwest. So and that, that was with the intention of getting into acting, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so acting has always been in, in my life because my mum was like an extra actor. She went to Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama in Cardiff, which is like the best in Wales and like probably up there with RADA, which is in London. Um, but she had to drop out when she gave birth to my sister, so she couldn't ever finish or do any kind of like showcasing. And she's like unbelievably talented. She did loads of extra work in Bristol for like Casualty, Doctor Who, Holby City, all these different shows. So we'd watch them all together on TV and she'd be like, oh, there I am, there I am, there I am. And I remember being as a kid like, oh, I'd love to do that. I'd love to be on screen. That'd be awesome. Um, and then did Village Pantomimes and they always cast me as the camp one. Don't know why. Um, <laughs> And dressed me up as a lady, <laughs> which I was fine to do. And then, uh, yeah, I went, I got to the age where I was like, I don't really know what I want to do in my life. My mum was like, what, what makes you happy? And I was like, being a dickhead and just like being in front of people. Um, and she was like, well, then why don't you just try this acting thing? And then auditioned. That's, cool. That's super cool. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. And because I, I had no, no real experience other than like an odd musical in Devon. Um, I was like, I won the experience. So rather than going the accredited kind of, um, uni route i trained with a theater company uh, a touring theater company that has the same syllabus because they but because they tour and you work with them they can't be an accredited course so it's basically the equivalent of a bachelor's but they do it over two years and it's 40 hours a week so it's like a full-time job as an actor mm. touring with this repertoire theater company which was awesome so you're constantly doing shows but in between shows you're doing like seminars with like rada directors and like you've got all these they just pick all these people up 
It was awesome and it was exactly what yeah, I needed. Sounds good. Sounds like you're learning your craft. Yeah, yeah, exactly. While you're on the job. On so the you job, throw yeah. yourself in the deep end. It's it was like unbelievable. a rotational grad scheme in many ways. Just yeah, yeah. Way, you get a taste of everything involved. So good. Um, so 40 hours a week for two years working as an actor, basically. Um, touring, going to Italy, uh, around the UK. And then left. And like every actor went, right, I'll be a waiter for two months and then a gig will happen. Someone will ring me like, and I'll be on television. It'll happen. I'll just be a waiter for two months. And then a year later, I'm like smoking like a fucking chimney, drinking on shift in a relationship <laughs> I'm unha unhappy in, like peppering my agent, just like, why aren't I getting auditions, getting new headshots every other week? Because I'm like, oh, clearly I didn't smile enough in the headshot. And you're just like trying different smiles. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> to try and get jobs it's ridiculous um and then that's actually when i found crossfit that's when i started training because i was so miserable and i was like i w came out of the station with a fag in my mouth i remember and saw crossfit north london and i was in like an old dilapidated warehouse i looked in the door and there was a guy doing bring muscle ups and i was like what the fuck what's he doing? What the fuck is he doing? Yeah, it was just this <laughs> tiny little, he looked like a kid doing my muscle ups. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? That's a, that's a good first scene, isn't it? To yeah, see literally, doing side profile, yeah. someone doing muscle ups. It's not just like something kept barbell going. overhead pressing or something. It's like looking through, the, looking through the fence at a play park, isn't it? Like, <gasps> those kids are playing, mum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you yeah. ever see somebody doing something in the gym and be inspired and ring muscle ups, is a pretty good way to go, isn't it? Yeah, that's unbelievable, isn't it? But I saw him doing that and then I just walked in and I was like, do you do like trial? like weeks or something and the guy was like oh no you could do like a foundation course came back did a foundation course um and then just fell in love with it and it was like the the only positive in my life at the time which sounds a bit geeky was training because i was miserable in my job wasn't getting acting gigs uh but i still had like actor in my bio and i was still like telling all my family like oh it's gonna happen it's gonna happen but whilst the only positive reinforcement in my life was just my coach being like, fuck, that was good. You moved very well yeah. today. You moved good. And then That's I good. Yeah. started feeling like, oh, well, as long as I've got this as my backbone of life, then surely this will just figure itself out. And if it doesn't figure itself out, at least I can get fitter and feel good about myself. That's where it formed. The training obsession formed then when it was the only positive in my life. Um, what was the question? <laughs> I mean, the questions are kind of multifaceted, it, 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 aren't they? Yeah, really just kind of digging in. Your professional how, background. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. So after that, uh, I then walked straight into WIT and handed my CV in and just said, give me a job. I want to work in this fitness space. I don't know what I want to do, but I want to get out of waitering because it was so stressful. It was well paid, but stressful. Um, and it's unhealthy, the habits I'm building just with like chefs who are like, offering me a bag or like something at the end of chefs. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Um, so I was like, I need to get out of this space and I want to be... I, the, I've listened to enough podcasts to know that you're the sum of the five people you spend most time with. And I was like, <laughs> I, I'm not spending time with the right people. Um, so I know I knew I needed to get out. And then I started working for WIT. Uh, what was your job at WIT? Initially, customer service by myself, just doing emails. And then did that for 18 months until the emails got 999 plus and they stopped counting. And I was like, I probably need help. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most classic masculine thing ever where you are literally so far beyond the point of help you're like yep nope i'm in trouble now yeah yeah, yeah. whereas really when it was 100 plus you probably yeah. should have yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm, really? i can't keep up with the ever, ever increasing email even though yeah. i'm doing everything i yeah. can all day every day um We've but yeah so a lot of people do assume because of my background working in this in the fitness space people dm me all the time being like um do you have any online programming? You, uh, oh, do they? You, you, okay. I, I saw your clean and dry video. Do you do any online programming? And I think people assume I'm a PT, um, but it's, I'm very much a zero hour contract actor first. Um, That's good though, because it's, it, I mean, it is good and I suppose there's negatives to that because you want them to perceive you in the way that you want to be perceived. Mm, yeah, but at the same really time, mind. it speaks to the, uh, the fitness and the presence that you have and all the mm. rest of it in that environment, doesn't it? That people see you as being an authority. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a compliment. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that is my background. So actor first and yeah, fitness just keeps me alive. And it, it, nice. the combination of the two of them gives you the very, very unique presence in a massive industry, mm. which means that essentially you're, you're scratching the surface on mm -hmm. the pool that is immediately available to you in terms of engagement. Because I think it's worth caveating for those listening that might not necessarily be in the social media world as much as others might be yeah. that your focus on likes and engagement for some people might sound quite vain or mm -hmm. almost incomprehensible that you attach 
value to those numbers. But for you, as somebody who's essentially your comedy is trying to reach as many people as possible, yeah. there is there is method to the composition and execution and distribution of these pieces of yeah, content entirely. And that's where essentially your KPIs yeah. are the arguably trivial yeah. numbers on a screen because yeah. you're playing somebody else's game. But at the end of the day, that is your that is your feedback mechanism. 100%. It's like theater. Like it, it's the equivalent. It's, it's applause. Yeah. It? yeah. It's, it's the equivalent of having a standing ovation and having four people turn up. Like if you get a standing ovation consistently, more brands are going to be like, we need to get involved in this guy because he clearly knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, if I remove myself... And again, if you made a th if it, in that following along with that analogy, if you made theater based on the fact that you wanted a standing ovation, you were like, "What is going to get a standing ovation?" It'd probably be a, a really sad ending or a really like yeah. vulgar show or something. You know what I mean? Like a feel to the audience. Yeah, if like you're constantly just thinking about numbers, whether they're going to yeah. clap, like, if you're thinking of the claps, you're doing it all wrong. And that's what I was doing for a very long time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go back to the true nature of loving training. And hopefully the rest sorts itself out. And it seems to be seems to be doing just that. So. It does. Like it it does. Like it. What are your goals as an athlete? 151 kilos. Yeah. <laughs> Clean One jerk. kilo every year until you die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Under a barbell at 29. Yeah, literally. <laughs> but they're, they're ever changing. And I am genuinely influenced by like you guys, like, like Unreal. And like there are so many people in the space. And I'm seeing more and more people, um, even on their stories, being like, does anyone know a good program for weightlifting and running and stuff like that? And they don't want to call it hybrid. They're like, yeah, they're yeah like, we, we, we did a we podcast, did a podcast on this yesterday. yesterday. Oh, did you? On, on the, the title is not the bastardization of the phrase, but essentially we have no right to gatekeep the phrase at all. Mm -hmm. we, we use it because essentially the way we, the conclusion I came to after a long 40 minute deliberation of me waffling and not really knowing what I was saying mm -hmm. was, just, <laughs> was just, people can listen back and hear that in real time, was essentially that, the current understanding of hybrid training gives people certain parameters that they can observe so that they can understand the entry point for them as an individual. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we broaden the phrase hybrid training out to I play tiddlywinks and play golf at the weekends, then it makes the term hybrid training too diluted for people to even know what it means, which yeah. that might mean that it doesn't give them the entry point to give it a go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for us, that's why we use the phrase hybrid training because it means, oh, they do hybrid training. It's, it's clear to understand. Well, therefore, what you've the, got an answer to the offer. question you just asked. Is I want to do weightlifting and running. Yeah. Well, well mm. that sounds like hybrid. These are the guy, the hybrid guys, and then you've got you've got a clear delineation, haven't you? But it, but yeah. it is a, it, it's a marketing term essentially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is a marketing term. There's no governing body. There's nothing like that. But I think we we kind of fell on a definition yesterday where we kind of we, we have no right to gatekeep it. But our our opinion is that generally hybrid training is where you're training disparate disciplines concurrently. Mm -hmm. So weightlifting doesn't support well. That's training training, training support, for maximal yeah. strength in and of itself does not support running. Mm -hmm. And the balance of those two things is what makes hybrid training hybrid training. Whereas mm -hmm. if you were doing lifting for the sake of getting better at running, that is simply cross training to make you a better runner. Yeah. Yeah, that so sense. that's kind of the conclusion we came to. But it's uh, I, I understand why there's reluctance to use the phrase because mm -hmm. it has become a bit bastardized. But we, we essentially use it so people have an easy entry point to understand what it is that we do and what we like to talk about. Mm -hmm. But it is a phrase that we are, we're becoming increasingly, we, I don't know how I feel about it. It's, it, it. I'm just aware that for for somebody that doesn't know who we are and doesn't know the background, I don't ever want there to be a perception of the phrase to be, oh, silly marketing term. Because it really irks to athletes and ultra runners and things that are just so anti-lifting. Really? Yeah, they hate it. They hate the phrase. I've seen myself in Let's Run forums <laughs> where the phrase hybrid, what does that even mean? Why be average at two sports, says the triathlete, that's average at three. But our ethos is essentially we want people to push themselves in the disciplines that they enjoy, but do it in a way that allows them to actually make progress rather than just continually and cyclically burn out. Mm -hmm. And there is a massive shift that we've seen. We have a lot of CrossFit athletes that come to us. There's kind of an evolution of Z's era stringer vests this is a bit dull. I'm going to go into some form of functional fitness. Yeah. Or they went into something else. They played five aside and bang pints. Or all of them, apparently. Bang bang pints. But no, what was it? Sink pints, bang weights, make videos, have fun, something like that. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll play it back. Yeah. We'll, the t-shirt will be coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> but essentially, it, it, it's we, 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 we value training for self-development, not for competitiveness. The competitiveness is with the individual. And that's why it's frustrating for us for this this seeming attempt to diminish what the phrase means because essentially the phrase is just giving people the confidence 
that actually you can do both of the things or three of the things that you enjoy doing mm -hmm. and make progress in them if you do it sensibly, mm -hmm. which means that you can essentially get more value across a spectrum of fitness mm -hmm. for your training individually rather than having the guy at your tri club or the guy at your powerlifting gym say, no, nah, you can't do that, mate. That's going to make you weak. That's going to make you slow. Can't do that. That can't be done. Yeah. Because people, people are always curious. I mean, you're doing hurdles and shot put the weekend. Yeah, love it. And uh, then P being a clean jack. But... You did a, a, a year or two ago. Maybe you a clean have... jerk? Yeah, yeah. What was the number? Oh, yeah. <laughs> was it a clean and a jerk? Apparently. <laughs> I had no idea. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um but but would you a year or two ago when you were hell bent on CrossFit, you probably wouldn't have even considered going to Batsy Parks to throw a shot, but because that might not put, at all. That might be a bit more fatigue in your shoulder. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. It'd, like imbalance my left to my right and I would be like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think the thing with CrossFit as well is there's also that murky water between functional fitness and CrossFit. People that are like, there's a lot of people it's in like- commercial really, isn't it? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Which makes it blurry, yeah. They literally, a, a lot of functional fitness heads do CrossFit workouts, but don't call it CrossFit because they, they're worried they don't, they, don't, they don't want to be pigeonholed in this like clique. Or get sued. Or get sued, <laughs> yeah, yeah, if yeah, they're not paying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of that in the CrossFit space as well, when in reality they are just doing the same thing and whatever you call it, just to keep training. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people that when they first start CrossFit and I'll put my hands up and say, I was one of them, you watch the documentaries, you start doing CrossFit, you go to a, a gym where everyone, the demographic is 40 to 55 year olds. You spank them in all the workouts and you're like, I'm going to the CrossFit games. <laughs> and everyone thinks I genuinely thought I was like in my foundation, I did a 50 kilo clean. And the coach was like, that's probably the most I've ever seen a, someone lift in a foundation class actually. And I was like, is it? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to the CrossFit Games. <laughs> that was an I'm hour into my CrossFit crossfit career. <laughs> <laughs> and then you link like two toes to bar together and don't rip. And you're like, I'm Matt Fraser. Um, so there's a lot of that. And I think everyone goes through this like almost like teenage period of CrossFit where you're like, you think you're amazing because you're picking up new skills so quickly because you, there's, there are so many skills to acquire. And then when you realize you put them all together at an elite level, it's so much work like and so much correct fueling is required to be able to compete at the top of the top and being like i'm so so lucky to rub shoulders with like the best in the space yeah it's cool and just seeing how they like operate their machines they literally all they're thinking about is like they constantly got like four liter bottles of water in their hand they've got like gels ready to go whenever they've got harry bow or stuff that's open um They've got their meals prepped. Like even going to the Gymshark event recently, there was a, like Half Thor had to have, he's not in the CrossFit space, obviously, but, but he could, the amount he of food that this man puts away. Oh, he probably could, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just seeing how much food, like even like the women eat, like uh, Sarah, who's unbelievable and she's in unbelievable nature, probably the best shape she's ever been in. She's smashing food. Like, and yeah. as someone that's like new to like understanding nutrition and things, you see, I'm still in the men's health days of less is more. As long as like you're lean, everyone will think you're strong. And like, I didn't eat carbs for like the first like eight months. I'm, I was so lean, like dick skin lean everywhere. Um, Cause I was just scared of carbs. The only carbs I'd have was like rice cakes with an omelet for dinner. Um, and like maybe one with way. my soup at lunch. <laughs> um, but I didn't understand anything about fueling. And uh, I think everyone, has that realization about two years into doing CrossFit. Yeah. You, when they stop progressing, they hit that plateau and, and they realize that it's dreadful, actually yeah. really, really hard to do everything really, really well. And it takes a long time. But go on. There is nothing inherently wrong with that, but I feel there is a competitive attitude within the sport mm. that makes people feel like they can never just enjoy the sport for the sake of enjoying it once they get to a certain level. And you've mm. always got to be pushing for more. You've always got to be placing X, Y, Z at these competitions. Yeah. And it can, I, I, I don't know, it's just my perception of having spoken to a few people that have yeah. kind of soured CrossFit for themselves yeah. by doing what you did with content. Yeah, Essentially yeah. putting so much emphasis yeah. on something that trying to exist like a professional athlete when they have a day job mm -hmm. is very difficult to There's do. a lot of that, yeah. And you can quickly ruin something that you love by over-indexing on what is required. Mm -hmm. And I think the inherent competitiveness of the sport. Well, you've come close, mate. You've come close as well. With yeah, the, no, very close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. The, oh, massively. Uh, the stuff that you've done. The double. The, the, the double, the double yeah, yeah. nearly switched you off from training. For, you know, we, we had to claw you back quite well. On that. Only recently, genuinely only recently. Like anyone, yeah. anyone yeah. seen I, me I on socials. Been, well, yeah. I had what, two, two and a half 
no, fucking telling lies, probably a six year hiatus, really, from properly pushing at things because I've just fucking yeah. turned myself off to it because mm. I'm just so sick of banging my head against it, the brick it, wall. It's, it's the, doing the things that you're talking about, pushing yeah. myself so hard that it's all negative. Mm. I'll go for a run now because that's going to make me stronger. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, and there's, there's an element of having to go through that, I think, to get to, I mean, all top level athletes that you'll speak to will have gone through a kind of a period of, of rebirth a few times where they've gone through this kind of horrible phase of God, I hate this. This is bloody horrible mm. and or uh, getting it wrong unless they've been through some kind of sponsored program or something. We had Dan Wallace who had people yeah, were coaching yeah, yeah. him throughout his career, but you've got to kind of go through that to a certain degree. But what's good about hopefully about what we're doing and about the people that you work with and, and, and are surrounded with, but some amazing people, mm. um, you, you then, have a collective learning as well. You've got that kind of ability to say, well, we've all made these mistakes and so now you don't have to. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, and that can slowly become, you know, CrossFit has evolved hugely since, Massively, since I yeah. first saw it kind of pop out, pardon the pun, pop out the box, but it has, it has evolved has, hugely. Yeah. Um, there are still some of the errors there that we see from externally. Yeah. That you guys are seeing internally, yeah. I think more, uh, but they're still more positive than negative. I think. Massively. And I think the, the point I was trying to make was essentially that that community supporting one another. Yeah, feel. yeah. Whilst there's a massive community element to CrossFit, it seems that everybody's also quietly competitive with, with one another, mm -hmm. which means that you you can inadvertently find yourself overexerting yourself once you put yourself in that competitive arena. Yeah. And because you're with these people on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah, you can kind of get the blinkers on a little bit, mm -hmm. which is actually the opposite of how I put the blinkers on and basically just yeah. put myself yeah. in an isolated hole. In a, yeah, yeah. In a, in a box, which is very different. And now, honestly, I mean, I've spoken about it on social, I've spoken about it on YouTube, and I, every week I have a good session. I'm like, yeah, I'm back, I'm back, I feel good. But genuinely, mid-March is when I felt like I'd actually recovered yeah. fully psychologically from the double where, I could, where was the double oh, september, september the 10th, september the 10th yeah. and 11th unfortunate thing to say isn't it um <laughs> and yeah just my my desire to get in the pool my desire to get on a bike my desire to be consistent with training when i've had like a 12 hour work day at my desk and it's 8 p.m and i think oh, i'll just bump that training session to tomorrow well, stop and then i wake up and start being yeah. work didn't yeah. you yeah, yeah. you've described that with, yeah, yeah. With i really both crave, of your comedy really crave and your social training. interaction yeah really crave social yeah. interaction but i don't have many people around me in edinburgh well, i mean we're trying to work to, to make that work yeah yeah because yeah, well, I, well, I have the same yeah. issues we, we're doing what sam's done repeatedly which is actually saying this is the problem and taken a positive step forward to find a solution rather than just constantly looking yeah. at the problem mm -hmm. going oh this is a problem this is a problem this is a problem oh why do i feel like shit well because the problem's been there the whole time and you've done nothing about it yeah so yeah. we're trying to work through that for both our sakes because training is intertwined with work and work is intertwined with training which makes the, the boundaries very blurred which means that i often find myself not enjoying the training because it feels like work and then not enjoying work because I feel like it's getting in the yeah. way of training. I can find mm. myself in that cycle, but I, I, I'm very fortunate to do the things that I do and I enjoy every element of what I do, but sometimes I get that balance wrong and it completely means that both things cave in on themselves. What's, and it's, what's really cool, sorry to cut you off, man. No, no. What, what's really cool about it, around the table uh, and the Sam story highlighting this uh, really, really well is that the fix for each of us has been to, and with your comedy as well, mm. uh, 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 is, uh, and with work, uh, I suppose you and I probably sit in that boat as well, if we consider comedy to be your work, although it's obviously yeah, a passion yeah. and a joy as well, yeah. is the fix has been to kind of turn in a little bit and say, well, what's my kind of true self here? What's what's mm. my authentic self? What's my passion? Uh, and why am I doing this? And, all that. And, and, and ultimately, where can I find the joy and the fun in it? So yeah. you've done that with the comedy and saying, well, now I'm going to make something that would make my mum laugh again, something, yeah, something yeah. that would make the immediate people around me, the comedy that I feel is fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and training you've done that with as well. It's like, I'm going to make it consistent, make it something that's enjoyable, something that I'm getting something out of and, yeah, and all yeah. the rest of it. You've done the same thing and, that you, you, and I have as well, where you kind of say, well, I'm ticking over, I'm not really enjoying it. Why don't I just pick the thing that I think would be the most fun for me and point everything at it? I mean, that should be bloody obvious, but mm. it kind of wasn't because you get caught in this moment, same with your comedy, same with your stuff where you kind of think, the outcome, and for you especially during that process, the outcome was the brutal. The outcome was the achieving the, the goal that you'd set out to achieve. And in amongst it, the, the joy of actually doing it was lost because the outcome became important. Mm -hmm. But for same, you, same story here, having spoken throughout the, the entire process, we've spoken about this for years, that exact process that Johnny's, that mechanism Johnny's described mm -hmm. was you and the fear of going self-employed, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Same, same yeah you thing, were the yeah. first person I was speaking to. I was on, yeah, yeah. on the fence for a very long time. And do you know what I was scared of is what you what you just mentioned there when you said like 
it became your work. It it wasn't my income. The comedy, the, the, the videos weren't my income. They were just this little, this thing that I was excited to share with people. And then once brands started to get involved and I realized I could possibly financially sustain living just on social, I was worried about that switch then becoming, right, I have to do videos yeah. and worried yeah. how that felt. And initially I think it did. I think that's part of the reason I started to go inside myself and cut out the training and focus heavily on the uh, the content side of things because it was no longer just a, a hobby. It was my how I'm going to stay in a house. <laughs> it was literally what's keeping me fed. Um, and yeah, I think going back to like what you just said there, just making things that are exciting for me and other people, hopefully, um, yeah, has helped me massively, mentally, hugely. Um, but I was on the fence for a very long time and you were the first person I spoke to about potentially doing it and you were very outwardly sp spoken about it, just saying do it mm. the whole process it's good advice I think um, well, it, it, I mean it, uh, not to be callous but essentially I got I could sense in the way that you were speaking to me about it and just the overarching questions and deliberations you were having mm. all of the when was this sorry roughly time wise just before I think uh, early last year I think I probably sp mm. first spoke to you or yeah well, it's an interesting thing Nate, if you remember when you were, let's say, corporate, yeah, and, and I was coaching you, and that was our relationship. You had to ask for the same advice, yeah, which was, "Can I make this?" I mapped it out and then, to an end point, though. Well, I had to badger you a little yeah, bit yeah, until, yeah. until eventually you made that decision. It was like, yeah, yeah, actually, I can do it. Uh, and and then you did what you do very well, which was to strategize and think it through in ways that I probably don't have the talent to do. It's also I'm very <laughs> grateful for you, but, <laughs> but but it's an interesting thing to both of you excuse me, discussing that need to kind of reach out and it might be somebody that you don't interact with a lot. Yeah, uh, I know well, we did interact, but to, for somebody to say, nah, fuck it, do it. it Sometimes was, it, you don't take that advice yourself. You could probably give that advice about just do it and then realize, oh, actually it needed somebody to kick me over the precipice. Yeah, to, even to, with training, even with yeah. training with like family members and things like my mum my comes to me and goes, oh, I don't like this bit. How do I get rid of fat there? And I'm just like, I know exactly how to give her like advice. And my brother as well, he's like, I've, I've just signed up to a gym, but I don't really know what I'm doing. And I'm like, just do something, just do something. Yeah. I should have been self-aware enough when I was in that like murky water of not knowing what I wanted to do in my life and likes took over. Um, that I should just keep doing stuff, just keep trying, just keep mm. showing up and the rest will sort itself out. Yeah, and that's what yeah. I tell my brother. I'm like, just go to the gym. I'll send you like four movements, just do two sets, choose a random weight that feels comfortable or a little uncomfortable and just do that four days a week or three days a week or two days a week. This isn't the magic boot I was hoping for. Yeah, I know. He's literally <laughs> like, oh, that sounds easy. I'm that's like, what, that's yeah, what the magazine it. said. <laughs> it's, yeah. amazing, it's amazing how hypocritical we can be though, isn't it? With, yeah. with, with what we, what we. That gets off to your point though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's difficult to uh, objectify, uh, not objectify, to be objective rather. Uh, yeah. When, when the, the solution has to be subjective, isn't it? Mm. So yeah. you do need to externally reach out and somebody to say, just fucking do it. You know? Yeah. And like, oh, Oh, that was the thing. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. bloody obvious. You have influencers back the left, right, and center being like, oh, the, the, the hardest of the workouts are the ones you need to be doing, and they oh, all shit. the same real. But essentially, they are correct. Yeah, yeah. Just turn up. Just do it. Just do something. It's better than not doing anything. Yeah. Um, just start. I think that's a fantastic place to draw a line under so. it before just, we just, take just it. Do it. I wonder if we can, angle. can we can we keep that as our slogan? Just do it. Is that, is that, is that no, been I, done? I, 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 I don't, on a t-shirt? I don't think that's taken. No. Or a shoe, perhaps? Yeah, as as <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should start a Japanese distribution center or be financed by a ja I mean, Yeah, there's, there's ideas here. There's ideas think, in my head. Just do it and uh, to underline some of that. Is, really is, enjoy is, is, that is you avoiding being sued now? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> just do the thing. <laughs> and and uh, to, to underline something I've really enjoyed about this uh, spending time with you, Sam, is, is this... Um, it, it probably pays now and again to ask yourself the question, am I, am I leaning into the passion and the joy? Mm. Am I doing this for purpose of authenticity yeah. or am I speaking to the demands of an algorithm, a set of likes, yeah. uh, you know, a, 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 a forecasted target or, or because I said the accountability that might be blah, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I've really enjoyed listening to you talk about kind of leaning into the joy because I can see across the table. I, you and I don't know each other the way that Ferguson mm. you do, but. I see a different man to the one I met a few years ago in in, in Belfast, and uh, you're positively glowing. Thank you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Zoom in 
that's where it's oh, that's where to end it. There we go. Well, go. <laughs> you, have get, you have to get your uh, nails done after this, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping Stan would keep me and get my nails done. Yeah. Yeah. Queer eye. So that is <laughs> this section before we have a little bit of fun. Sam, yes. whip out your phone. Oh. Whip out your phone. That had a H after that, P. What are right. we, we, we doing here? So, uh, uh, <laughs> annoyingly, the most viral video I've ever had in my life was just a three-minute segment from a podcast that I filmed five months ago. We did one episode. <laughs> so, uh, it had 10 million views, all right? Um, and it's <laughs> a fun game. you didn't care about views. What's that? No, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. But it's uh, called Sam Silly Joke Time. Mm. Uh, and the premise of the game is you're allowed mm. to laugh, but you're not allowed to smile. Oh, <laughs> Johnny <laughs> smiled. <laughs> so you got to relax your mouth. Oh, dear. And I'm going to look at you in the eyes. I don't think I can do this already. So you're allowed to laugh. <laughs> We're not allowed actually, to smile. Actually, I knew this was the caveat, but I've only really processed what this actually entails now. Yeah, it's hard. I'm going to practice. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to look you have to look me in the eyes Come okay on. okay all right so i've got a list of pretty simple jokes um i think they get a bit, a bit more aggressive as we go how do you win you don't laugh oh you don't smile i, th I think it's it's how do you how not do you lose win? <laughs> how do you win what's the prize <laughs> right we'll start with a simple one relax your faces please gents <laughs> To the man dressed in camouflage on crutches who stole my fucking wallet. Listen, you can hide, but you can't fucking run. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Done. It's a simple one. I think he's going to escalate somewhere. Yeah. That's a nose laugh. Mm. Number two. Yeah. Why shouldn't you relax your face? No, no, no. no after fine. him accidentally I did a, snotting all over the microphone. I did a, okay. I did a nose laugh. And it became, so uh, the game goes, goes on. Game goes on. Yeah, just nose laugh. <laughs> Why shouldn't you buy your underpants from a nuclear power station? I don't know. Because Chernobyl fallout. You're smiling. I am. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt my cheeks go up. And then, <laughs> like, and, then just, and then just held it there, thinking that, that would be okay. Next one. Okay, I failed. Relax yes. your face. Relax your face. You have to open, John, you have to open your mouth. John, you have to open your mouth a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> That was, <laughs> that was, that was a great punchline. It was really good. Open your mouth, really <laughs> Did you know that squirrels die after having sex? Well, the one I had did. I knew the bus. All three of us just go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my my disgust caught me off guard. Yeah, my, my, my yeah. intrigue. <laughs> We're not good at this. Ooh. All right, relax your face, Judd. This is a longer okay, okay. one. S sit tight. Okay. Do you know why Dr Pepper comes in a bottle? <laughs> <laughs> His wife died. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> 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 well before the fucking start. <laughs> 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 that audio is going to be amazing independently. Okay. <laughs> Since he heard Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Do you know why Dr. Pepper? <laughs> he's, uh, that's not helpful. This is a two player game. And you were, uh, he, I was laughing at you laughing at right, got two more, two more. It made me cry a little bit. There, really. Right, relax your face. It's di difficult to not. Oh. <sighs> It's, it's the proper naughty boy in the classroom effect. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? it's the teacher like, going. It's, it's the anticipation of not laughing that makes it <laughs> yeah. hilarious. All right. Two more. Relax your faces. Over your mouth, Johnny. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> okay. My uh, nan passed away recently. She needed a blood transfusion, but it was too late. She kept telling me to be positive, be positive, but it's been pretty difficult ever since. <laughs> 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 your nostrils. <laughs> I can live to make an eye contact with your nostrils. Go. Oh, last no. one. Last one. I thought I'd done it, and then I just thought you, 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 you shrink. You. <laughs> oh, I did my oh. mouth. <laughs> all right, last one. Oh, oh okay. relax. It's just terrible. Good. We've all done really badly. Last your one. your delivery is not. I mean, your it's delivery is very happening. good, but you're laughing as yeah, you go. I, know, I, can, laughing. I can see the punchlines. <laughs> uh, right, we'll relax. My girlfriend's dog died. Hmm. So I tried to cheer her up by getting her an identical one. 
just made her more upset. She screamed at me and said, what am I supposed to do with two dead dogs? <laughs> I saw, the thing is with that as well, I saw that coming immediately as well. I knew the punchline and still couldn't fucking God, stop We it. failed, we failed. Yeah. Miserably. Yeah, big F yeah. on that one, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks gents. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, well. Uh, that was awful. I did yeah, not, did I did not we do did well. Terrible. The first one we nailed, uh, and then it got progressively worse. Okay, well, thank you everyone for listening to the Omnia Performance Podcast featuring... I'm going to go to sleep tonight and, and here. Just open your mouth a little bit, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like that. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I, we did discuss beforehand the brief loosely of talk a little bit about Sam and his training and then descend into debauchery. Yeah, and we seem to be here. Exactly so that. job done. The brief, yeah. big tick. Thank you very much, Sam. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you for having me. And my cheeks <clears throat> are fatigued <laughs> from trying really hard to <laughs> not raise them. Never heard that before. I've, I've got cheek fatigue. No, it, it, from, what, from was the, what was the phrase? There was a phrase you uttered in the car that I'm confident has never, ever been used in a sentence before. There's somebody upstairs, <laughs> somebody <laughs> yeah, higher, yeah. noting down. Yeah, well, that, uh, I think it was the European, the European... Father Christmas of CrossFit. Yeah. The European Father Christmas of CrossFit, everybody. Okay. Goodbye. Okay, thank you. <laughs>